So today we're going to be unboxing the Novastar Nova Pro HD LED video processor and we'll get started by opening up this outer cardboard box which we open up to reveal another cardboard box. This is the second box. Go ahead and lift up these stickers and pull up these tabs. Lift up these stickers and pull up these tabs. And inside there is a third cardboard box with accessories in it, and the processor is in here somewhere. Take a look at the accessory box, and inside they always have a nice packing slip. Let's look at it. You got the USB, okay, let's take DVI, a look at the front HDMI, of the Pro PP, HD or power button, the input selection buttons, the LCD screen. The menu button's right here. You push this in to select the menu. You scroll up and down the menu like that, and you go back one menu window by pressing the escape button. It has some different buttons here. We have a black button to make the screen go black, freeze to freeze the screen on whatever is showing, and then the picture in picture so you can have a second source on the screen at the same time. And then over here, the two USB ports. This one goes directly to your computer so that you can program the processor using the Novastar software. This one can be used to connect this processor to another one so that you can see them both in the software and program them, program them both at the same time. All right, looking at the back, the first thing you'll notice is that all these ports have the ability to accept the Pro Shell, namely these EtherCon uh, ports here versus regular Ethernet connections on the VX series Novastar processors. So it's just a lot stronger of a connection. Uh, maybe why they call it a Pro. Um, also, so let's go through the ports. The first one we're going to look at is the network port here so that you can plug your processor into the network, control it using the Novastar web page control. Then you have your two USB ports that mirror the ones that are on the front. Plug this one right in your computer to program the controller using Novastar software. Use this one to connect this processor to another and then one. The four LED and then you out. Can see so both this actually the handles software. the same amount of pixels as a VX4S, 2.3 million pixels. Um, you max out each port at about 655,000 pixels. Um, all right, I'm dropping down. We'll just gloss over the audio because why would you be doing audio? Maybe you can comment and tell me why you'd be using audio with your Novastar. But the inputs we have here are DisplayPort, HDMI, port, HDMI, VGI, VGA, <laughs> DVI, composite video slash CVBS. Then we have 3G SDI, in and loop. And again, with with uh, loop, that's a way to sync your content between two devices. You come in with the 3G SDI, and then you come out of the loop of this processor into the in of another processor, and that syncs your content up between the and two processors. And then you have Gen GDI loop. There's another difference so between the There are two loops. I don't know why that one's separated, but you could come in DVI here and then come out the DVI loop here into another processor's DVI in. You have a DVI and an HDMI monitor out. So it's the first time we're seeing an HDMI monitor out. Okay, so the last thing you're gonna notice that's different about this processor over the VX series scalers is the that it has built-in fiber conversion. So the way this works is each one of these fiber ports corresponds to your data outputs. So one is one. And so roughly what you're gonna do is have, you're gonna put a fiber module into this slot, and then you'll be able to plug in a fiber cable from here all the way up to your wall. And at your wall, you'll have either a CVT310 or CVT320 fiber converter from Novastar that will convert that signal from fiber back to data again. Um, now, the only thing you need to know is that you're gonna to have to choose if you wanna have single mode or multi-mode and then you'll either put a single mode or multi-mode module in here and you'll have single mode or multi-mode fiber cable and then you'll also that will also determine which okay i turn the processor on now we're going to go scroll through Nova the menu Star. first thing is brightness you click once and then you can change it and then when you're done changing it click again 
Screen settings is where you can do a quick configuration, tell it how many um, rows you have in your wall, your video wall, how many columns, how many panels or frames you have on one, on, on data port number one, and then here's data flow from a front view. You're gonna tell it which configuration you have connected your data cables. And once you're done with that, a lot of times your screen just works if it's a rectangle. Um, let's go to, then you go to input settings. You have the preset resolutions, refresh rate there, custom. You can enter, enter in custom resolution and refresh rate. Output settings, you can enable scaling and then you can enable the auto fit, which is the auto scaling. You can do custom scaling, image offset, and then you can apply to all. All right, so the next is display control, normal, freeze, blackout. Those are the buttons on the front too. Test pattern, scroll through your test pattern. Ooh, space, speed, lots of features there. Image, um, image settings. So there are a lot more controls in there. Gamma, um, channel effect. Let's go back. Advanced settings, picture in picture, where you can have two sources on the wall at once. You can choose what your main source is, what your picture in picture source is, and then set uh, the height and width and start X and Y. Transparency too, transparency, I can talk. Advanced configuration. Montage, that would be interesting. Load cabinet files, alarm threshold, <laughs> advanced properties, redundancy. Okay, I'm just showing you what we have here. I'm DMX address and hardware version slash firmware version. Communication settings, network settings. and the language, and that is it. All right, that's the overview of the Nova Pro HD. If you need one of these fast, we have them in stock near the Nashville, Tennessee area. Um, just click the link in the description, thanks.